the 11th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Makai Becton. Tackle, Louisville. So with the first pick the Jets had in the 2020 NFL Draft, they chose offensive tackle Makai Becton. Now, there's a lot of talk about the Jets either going wide receiver or offensive tackle with their first round pick, or possibly trading back, or possibly even trading up. So the way the board fell, the Jets didn't need to trade up, because there were still two tackle prospects that were available with the first one grade, and there were still all the receivers left. The Jets had the ability to take the number one receiver on their board, had they wanted to. Now, the Jets decided to go offensive tackle. They could not choose from the other two offensive tackles that were drafted earlier. With pick four, the Giants took Andrew Thomas, offensive tackle from Georgia. And with pick 10, the Cleveland Browns took Jedrick Wills, offensive tackle from Alabama. So the Jets had a choice. They could go offensive tackle Makai Becton or offensive tackle Tristan Wirfs. Now, Wirfs and Becton both had amazing combines. So why did the Jets go Becton? I believe the Jets took Becton because he is a true tackle. When you look at a guy like Tristan Wirfs, there are a lot of projections by NFL scouts where they project him to be a guard at the next level <clears throat> because of a smaller frame and smaller arms. Makai Becton has the longest reach, and Makai Becton is 6'7", 360, and ran a 5'1", 40. So he's an athletic freak. So why does that matter? Why does that fit? Well, the Jets run a primarily zone blocking scheme. So they like to run the ball in a zone blocking scheme. So what that requires are tackles that have the ability to get to that next level and have agility laterally and have the ability to go downfield quickly. So Makai Becton being a 360 plus pound tackle and being able to run a 5-1-40 is almost a no brainer. Now. You would think he would be a no-brainer, but when you delve deeper, there are some concerns. A 6'7", 360 guy, while he is fast and while he is agile for that size, there are concerns about height and weight becoming a factor for him. Can his body hold up? Will there be concerns weight-wise? Another thing uh, that came up during his draft process was that he did have a flag drug test at the Combine. Now, the Jets did their own research, they did their due diligence, and they are not worried about this test from what I have read. Um, it, it seems as though it was just a blip on the radar. Um, and I think it's right for the Jets to be confident in Makai and what he's telling them because he had no failed drug test prior. Um, and again, it wasn't a fail, it was flagged. Um, it's believed to be for marijuana, but it has not been confirmed. So as of right now, to me, uh, the Jets can take that however they want to. They talk to Makai. Makai tells them the truth, hopefully, and they can discern whether they're willing to take that risk, and ultimately, they were. So, the grade I would give this pick, before we get into the film, uh, the grade I would give this pick right off the bat would be an A. Now, I give it an A because, to me, he was the best offensive lineman available. Uh, he fits the scheme very well. And he has the ability to start day one. So with those three things, uh, it's hard to turn that down. Uh, six, seven, three, six. Like I said, if you can keep this guy at tip, tip top shape, you give him NFL coaching, have him mature. Uh, there's no reason why he cannot be a dominant tackle down the road. Now there are, all, are also concerns regarding his pass protection ability, um, but almost unanimously. It is agreed that he is the best run blocking tackle in this draft. So the Jets like to run the ball. They have a all pro ex all pro running back in Le'Veon Bell. And they want to get him going. They're paying him a lot of money. He is a top five highest paid running back. They want him to be able to play at a top level. So what do you do? You get the best run blocking offensive lineman in the draft and you plug him in day one and you help Le'Veon. And you also help your young quarterback in Sam Donald. You sure up his blind side. So I, I would give the pick an A. Uh, I don't go A plus because to me, he was not the best tackle in the draft. To me, that would be Jedrick Wills from Alabama. Now, Makai Becton does, however, have the highest ceiling. So the Jets are confident in their staff to coach him up 
and make him the best he can be. And if he's at his tip top level, if he reaches his ceiling, he will be the best tackle this draft saw. He will be the best tackle in this draft regardless. He is the highest ceiling out of every every prospect at the offensive line position. The other concern could be, sure, he has the highest ceiling, but what is his floor like? That's the risk the Jets took. His floor is probably the lowest of all the offensive tackles taken in the first round. Um, You know, if he doesn't come in ready to go to work and he doesn't buy into the program and he's lackadaisical um, and that 360 balloons up to a 380 and now he's 6'7", playing under more stress on his body than ever before against the best competition he's ever played, um, that could be a concern. Um, And now I want to get into his pro comparison. Um, I compare him to Trent Brown of the Oakland Raiders. Um, Trent Brown Brown plays the same position and is very similar in height and weight. He's 6'8", 360. Um, When he was drafted, he was 6'8", 360. He's gone up to 380, and there was concerns about him too playing at that weight. Um, But he's laid all those to rest. Um, He's come in to play for the Oakland Raiders, um, and he made a Pro Bowl in his first year with the Raiders. And, you know, his measurables, he ran a 5'3", 40. So he's a little taller, a little heavier than Mackay. But Mackay ran a little faster than him. But you look at the comparison, you can see, just looking at a picture of Trent Brown, put it next to Mackay, you can see the similarities right away. Um, And... Makai, similar to Trent, they were both known for being the big guys, uh, 6'8 and 360 plus, um, dominant run blockers, and they needed some work on their offensive uh, pass pro set footwork. So the similarity there is Trent Brown. Uh, Trent Brown just recently signed a four-year, $66 million contract with the Raiders, and at the time made him the highest paid lineman in the league. Uh, do I think they overpaid? Maybe, but that's for a different video. Um, the pro comparison would be Trent Brown. There's a lot of similarities there, and I think his ceiling is actually higher than Trent Brown's. I think Trent Brown's around his ceiling right now, um, and he's not going to get much better. Um, he's still a very good lineman. So, to me, Trent Brown, Makai Beckton, very similar players. I think Makai is the higher ceiling, and I think that's why the Jets took him out of 11. Okay, first play I want to show. So Makai Becton is playing left tackle right now, lined up on the right side of your screen. He has the green ring around him. So this first play here, he'll be run blocking. Uh, number 57, the defensive end. So what I want to take note of real quick, as soon as the play starts, right there, that first quick step. This is a nice um, showing of Makai's agility and how he's a freak athlete. Um, it's not many times where you can say you have a six seven 360 plus pound tackle that could take that first quick step and the lateral quickness that he possesses so right here is in perfect position his hand is perfect hands placement right now um, and the run is going right behind him um, as the play progresses you'll see just the brute strength of which Makai possesses uh, he knocks that guy over um, and obviously now this this defensive end is in hold position with his back uh, to the play um, and you know you could say the play is over but Makai Becton loves to finish and play through the play until he hears that whistle so he's still blocking he's still going to go after this guy and if you watch even though this guy is completely out of the play at this time he's basically off of the field uh, he's on the sideline now Makai is still chasing him down and Makai actually is off the screen now but he finishes the block um, all the way to the sideline um, so that just shows you his agility, his natural quickness, his freak ability, and his power, and how he won't stop till the play is over. So now that we did a one running play, I wanted to show off his pass protection ability. So here he is on the left side of your screen, the ring under him again. Uh, it's a play action, and right here. You see him anchored down and widen out that pocket. Strong base, strong frame. He's a big dude, 6'7", 360 plus. So when he can plant his feet, get the wide frame, and hunker down, he will hold that pocket. So right here, 
uh, the the back, uh, the up back there takes the edge, and the shift the line shifts to the right. And Makai is able to spread out his feet to where he's anchoring himself into the middle of his pocket, and is able to keep himself upright. It's still an athletic enough stance to where he can take the brute's force from the defender and still be able to stand tall and hold that pocket. And now just look at the time quarterback for Louisville has here. No pressure whatsoever. He's able to step into this throw, uh, and get it over the top, and complete it. Okay, so here's one last play I want to show. Another pass pro set or a pass protection set. Here he is going up against the edge for the Miami Hurricanes here. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Makai's footwork, and obviously we know he's a dominant run stuffer, run blocker, excuse me, um, and that's what every scout can agree with, but there are some scouts that have some concerns about his pass protection ability uh, regarding his footwork. Now, he's new to the game of football, so he still needs to learn the intricacies, but it's a lot easier to build with a 6'7", 360 plus athletic freak than with something else. Uh, so right here, you see the nice, even kick steps, sizing up the defender. Now, I would have liked him to be the aggressor here and get the hands on first instead of letting him get hands on. The defensive end gets hands on to the chest, uh, but Makai strong enough to knock those hands away as you right there. Um, I'd rather him, his hands be a little up a little earlier rather than him be reacting. He can be pro, have ready hands and get ready for the, the move from the, the end there. Um, but regardless, because of his brute strength, um, he's able to push those hands away very easily. Now in the NFL, how will that translate? Um, he's gonna have to keep his hands up and get him ready earlier so that when the defensive end does make this move, because the defensive end in the NFL, if he gets his hands in the middle of Makai, um, you know, they're stronger than college players, obviously. So Makai has to be ready for some bigger guys against him and guys who have more strength. So does a nice job of uh, disengaging with the D end. And that's just perfect footwork here. So you can see, um, although there are some concerns with his footwork, when he gets his footwork down, this is what he can do. I mean, there, there is no pressure coming from this left side. Now, this is why the Jets picked him at 11. Because the sky's the limit. Once he gets this footwork down, and he has this, he gets NFL coaching, NFL offensive line coaching, getting those hands ready, getting the footwork down to a T. Um, that's when he's going to be really dominant in both the run and pass situations. Um, so I think taking him at 11, you're banking on him being able to accept the coaching and you're banking on him having a high ceiling. 